Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. I was just playing a little word feud on my iPhone 4S. This is Ask James? No. Welcome to the first unofficial episode of Ask Not. That's right. I'm flirting with the new name. Making the old name jealous. I'm a name whore. The first episode of the show, formerly known as Ask James, was well received. With some very heavy rounding, I can say that almost a thousand people watched it. I didn't expect such high numbers. So, you people watching right now are the early adopters. You could say, I watched it when. Then, when it blows up and gets huge, you can complain about how it's too mainstream, how I sold out, how I can't relate to the little people anymore. You know, kind of like Green Day. Listen, this is your warning. I would sell out so fast. For five extra subscribers, I would sell my son to a band of gypsies. Or worse yet, the Octomom. I would cut off one finger from each hand for a shout out on equals three. Hey, if Bart Simpson can live with four digits, so can I. For a little extra cheddar in the bank, I would endorse cigarettes as a healthy alternative to eating vegetables. I would sell out so fast, but until I do, let's get to some questions. K. Hunopi writes, interesting project. Can I ask you anything? Yes, you can ask me anything, except for the password to my bank account. It's definitely not jbieberfan74, so don't try it. Don't. Don't go there. I will definitely be answering beer questions because you gotta dance with the one that brung you. But I want to branch out, so give me some off-the-wall stuff in the comments section. Plumer J writes, Is it wrong that I can't stand IPAs? They are just too bitter and hoppy for me to enjoy. I feel so alone <laughs> in the craft beer community. Hey, Plumer. Here's a little craft beer hug. Come on, come on. From Jimmy. It is not wrong to dislike or like any type of beer. It's a very personal, subjective thing, and anyone who makes fun of you for what you drink is a stuck-up snob. So tell them to go stick their snifters where the sun don't shine. Which might just mean the refrigerator. Besides, there is plenty of room in the craft beer world for stout porter fans. I find that the hot bitterness in beers is an acquired taste. Kind of like coffee or clubbing baby seals. Ooh, he was so cute. In fact, once you start to like the bitter beers, you'll probably seek out the most bitter beers you can find with the highest IBUs, aka International Bitterness Units. If you want to develop your taste for the hops, after all, it's in almost every beer, here's my recommendation. Make next month IPA month. You gotta do it. Buy a case of IPAs, a six each of Dogfish Head 60 Minute IPA, Sierra Nevada Torpedo Extra IPA, Racer 5, and an IPA from one of your favorite local breweries. After drinking a case of IPAs over the course of a month, I think you will be on your way to becoming a hophead. Go do it, and let me know if this works in the comments section. Mr. Donimus, LSU or Bama for BCS? What a stupid question. Everyone knows that an elephant would crush a tiger in a fight. That's why I'm calling it Bama by 21. Using that same logic, we'll call it the mascot theory of relative strength. I know that LSU has never beaten Alabama, ever. I don't even have to look it up. That's how confident I am. And after looking at the list of SEC mascots, I'm pretty sure that the Tide have never lost an SEC game and the South Carolina Gamecocks have never won. I mean, come on, it's a chicken. What can a chicken beat? which also makes me wonder how an Ohio State Buckeye, a silly little nut, could have ever beaten anyone. Roll Tide! Mr. Nate Zilla writes, I'm considering having a beer tasting party at my house, and I was wondering if you had any ideas on how to go about this. Okay, first, buy me a plane ticket and I'll come host your party, talk about the beers, and provide amusing anecdotes that will delight your guests. Of course, you'll have to pay my $12 speaking engagement fee, which might stretch your budget a little too far, you f***ing tightwad. Man, and I was available that night too. Okay, so you're going to do it without me. Here's some ideas. You could have several beers of the same style from different breweries, like IPA night, which would make food pairing easier. You could focus on beers from a certain country, like Belgium, and serve them with cuisine from that country. You could serve a flight of beers from one of your favorite breweries. Serve them in order from the lightest flavor to the heaviest, which is not necessarily lightest to darkest. 
Make sure you have plenty of clear plastic sampling cups and water so that snobs like me can clear our palates if we want to look refined. Also, make sure at your party you say things like hot forward, roasted malts, and unbalanced. This will let people know that you are very smart and informed and therefore better than them. In the last episode, I brought up the Republican caucus in Iowa. Bob Otto Bob wrote, Politics and beer don't mix, James. Of course they do. Everyone knows that there are only five things that you're legally allowed to talk about while drinking beer. Beer, politics, music, sports, and that awesome business that you want to open that would be fun to run and make you a millionaire. Man, we gotta do this. Call me in the morning, man. <laughs> but I'm guessing a lot of people on this forum actually do talk about beer. But with regards to politics and the Iowa caucus, Age as the Squishy writes, Mitt Romney will win the caucuses and the nomination. But as a Democrat who wants to see Obama reelected, I'd love to see Newt or Ron Paul win. Mr. Donimus is going for Ron Paul. Seems like he's the only one that understands what Americans really need and want in the change of government. KB Roberts wants Ron Paul. Brandon 0409 says Newt Gingrich might win. Of course, that was a week ago. Things have changed. Billy Bob Dick. I don't vote Republican and I never will. Lord Poopy, who has an awesome username, writes, Dr. Paul for the win. Everyone knows pandering establishment candidates are old hat. Now, I'm surprised as everyone that Ron Paul has moved to the top in Iowa. Would not have seen that coming three weeks ago. I like a lot of the ideas of Ron Paul, like not being the world's police force and balancing our budget, but eliminating the EPA, come on. I like clean water and air. Someone needs to hold companies accountable for the negative effects that they have on society. And Paul's suggestion that private property owners would use lawsuits to keep companies in check is costly and patchwork at best. Am I going to personally sue everyone that pisses in my drinking water? I don't have the time. I guess it would be a good job creation thing. Finally, all those poor unemployed lawyers could finally get rich. Could someone share with me the wisdom of abolishing the EPA in the comment section? Dedication2 asked if I knew any Hoosier jokes since I live in Ohio, which borders Indiana. Look, I live in a town that lives and dies with Ohio State football. They make Michigan jokes. They write songs about how they hate the state of Michigan and they actually play them on the radio. It's either awesome or obnoxious depending on your point of view. The only Hoosier joke I could find was Indiana University football, 0-8. They were amazing this year. And that's sarcasm. What are you drinking for Christmas? JDS Productions is drinking Anchor Steam Christmas Ale and Stone More Than Black IPA. KB Roberts is drinking Celebration Ale. And I'm drinking whatever you put in my hand. I love the questions. Keep asking. Remember, it could be about anything. Be creative. If I didn't get to yours, don't despair. I'm reading all of them, and I may answer yours in a future episode. I'm James Knott. Thanks for watching. Ask Knott. Knott Knott. Who's there? James. James who? James Knott. Your joke sucks! You have a face for radio! Leave me alone! <laughs>